Cataclysmic events such as the Japan or New Zealand earthquakes demonstrate how quickly businesses can be decimated when their supply chains are disrupted. ILS-TV spoke with Robert Reeves, a partner in the insurance claim services of Ernst & Young, and he says although companies cannot plan for every contingency, there are two key factors that should be implemented into every supply chain management strategy. Number one, get buy-in from the whole organization. The top down, you have to have them setting a tone. Um, you know, your procurement people generally are, um, are graded and, and compensated based on how well they reduce the cost of procurement. Um, reducing costs so often means uh, kind of having a lot of the, the um, suppliers in one area and limiting the number of suppliers and having them hold, uh, having holding less inventory. So um, on one hand, they've got incentives to, to make the process as lean as possible, but in doing that, it increases risk. So making sure that there's a balance, understanding you don't want to just reduce costs, but you need to do it in a way that makes sense. Um, so if you if you're got a certain component that the, the, the supply is constrained throughout the system, um, make sure you've got some backup, make sure you, you have some more safety stock. Um, the other thing I would say is it's a continuous process. You can't do an assessment of your supply chain risks on, you know, and not look at it for three years. Um, th there can be components which are plentiful supply on in January every year. Six months later they may be severely constrained. So you've got to continuously update um, any analysis of supply chain risk work with your procurement team and, and other people to make sure that you've got the, the key risks identified because they're going to change time to time. A lot of times people focus on the, the very tangible events, whether it's a, a windstorm, it's a hurricane, it's an earthquake, but you know, political risk is another thing that has to be considered, whether it's in the Middle East, whether it's Pakistan, whether it's, you know, we had clients that, that would source a lot of product from Venezuela a few years ago. Well. It's now it's riskier and it's still a very important market to them for both selling their goods and also getting some supply from there. But you know you've got to f you got to focus uh, some kind of consideration on the fact that you know there's some instability in there that may impair your supply chain. Uh, the other thing that I, I think clients tend to overlook is it's not just the suppliers; it's also the logistics. So again, um, we'll see clients that will focus on. You know, if something happens in a certain area, they want to ship a different way. Well, Japan, another example where you know, everyone has the same backup plan. So if everyone has the same backup plan, then that's constrained. So you know, be creative about how you can, how you can use logistics to, to kind of solve supply chain issues.